we're getting ready to finish Chicago Robinson's sophomore season here at Memphis. And through his first seven games, he's thrown for 1,970 yards, 17 touchdowns, and only three interceptions. While his team was currently sitting in third place at the American Conference at 4-3 and three with a 2-1 and one conference record. And hopefully they can make that 3-1 and one in conference play as they were at home getting ready to take on Navy. This game was not off to a good start for Chicago Robinson as on his first pass attempt of the day, he would be picked off by the Navy defense. Couple that with poor protection from his line and some sacks and just things weren't great overall. Near the end of the first quarter on third and eight, Robinson would finally get a good look at a receiver, getting him inside the 15. And he would follow that up on third and goal by finding his tight end in the end zone for a touchdown. Hopefully that meant Robinson and the offense were starting to heat up now as they were down by three to Navy here in the second quarter. And it looked like that might be happening as Chicago Robinson got his team down the field and inside the five again, where on first and goal, it would be a play action and Robinson didn't like what he saw from the defense, so he would take off out of the pocket and take this into the end zone himself. The third quarter would be quite different for this Memphis offense though, as Chicago Robinson just couldn't seem to get a break from his offensive line. This quarter was filled with three and outs, sacks, and incomplete passes galore for Robinson. So his team wasn't in the greatest place headed into the fourth quarter where this trend continued. Their defense would actually give them the lead, but they couldn't do anything on offense still. So when Navy would score and go up by five, Robinson needed to get his team in the end zone on this possession. On second and 10, he would drop back to throw from under center when fight is tied in on the corner route inside the 25. And on the very next play, Robinson would show why he was considered an improviser quarterback as he would escape the pocket, throwing on the run, finding his receiver for a touchdown to take the lead, where his coach would want to go for two, but again, Robinson would be intercepted on the goal line. Despite that interception, his defense would hold strong to pick up the victory, which definitely wouldn't have been possible without that last drive from Chicago. Add that along with his overall stat line, and he would get named player of the game. The next matchup for Robinson and his team was going to be a tough one, as even though they were at home, it was rainy conditions again, and they were taking on one of the top teams in the conference. Chicago and his offense would get down the field and find the end zone on their first drive, but Tulane would get down the field and score on their first possession as well, as now Memphis was looking to get back down the field to take the lead right back. As under center and eye formation, it would be play action, and Chicago Robinson would fire a dart to the end zone, and would follow that up with one more touchdown pass on an RPO. Tulane was doing a good job of hanging in this one with Memphis though as it was still tied at 21 apiece but Chicago had gotten his offense down the field once again and into the end zone. With just over a minute to go they were looking to take the lead once again over Tulane but this interception might change that but thankfully their defense would get the ball back and give the offense a chance to tack on a touchdown. Robinson now had a chance to put his team up by two possessions here in the second half but would throw his second interception of the day as that would allow Tulane to tie it up at 35 apiece and then Robinson would throw his third interception of the day to the Green Waves defense as they would take this all the way back inside the 40. No one in front of him. It would be a pick six for Tulane to take the lead. Now playing from behind, Chicago Robinson had to get his team into the end zone on this possession. And he would do just that on second and goal from the two yard line. So this game would end up going to overtime as Tulane would score a touchdown on their very first possession, but Memphis would answer right back with one of their own. They would now have to try to score another touchdown, which they would do no problem and then they would have to go for a two-point conversion which they wouldn't be able to convert and Tulane would take full advantage of that as they would convert their two-point conversion and win this game. Although Chicago threw for seven touchdowns, he threw for three costly interceptions today and the Memphis fans definitely noticed as they took to social media to let him know how they felt about it. Hopefully he could win back their trust with a win against their rivals UAB on the road next week. It looked like this game might get off to a slow start for Memphis but Robinson would connect with his receiver on third and 16. As this drive would continue and on a RPO, he would find his receiver again down inside the five, where on third and goal, Memphis would pound it into the end zone for their first touchdown of the day. Although it didn't look like one, Robinson would follow that up with his first touchdown pass of the day against the Blazers. And with his team up by seven with less than 20 seconds to go in the first half, he was looking to get them into field goal range. But unfortunately, that wouldn't happen as they would head to the second half with only a seven point lead. That would change quickly though for the Tigers is on an end around sweep. This would be taken into the end zone for a touchdown.
touchdown. And although UAB was still keeping it close against Memphis, they couldn't stop Chicago Robinson from finding the end zone. A touchdown on this drive could seal the game for the Tigers, but Robinson's pass would be knocked incomplete. And the Blazers would end up tying it up at 35 apiece with just over a minute to go. And then Chicago Robinson would throw in costly interception to the defense. And although they wouldn't score a touchdown, the Blazers would take a three-point lead with a field goal, and then Robinson, with a chance to take his team down the field, would throw a costly interception again. And that would seal the deal in this rivalry game for UAB, as they would walk away with a three-point victory over Memphis. Another solid day for Chicago Robinson, but again, a three-interception performance from him really cost the team. And that would put him at 10 total interceptions so far in his sophomore season. And Robinson was hoping to bounce back in this game against North Texas. While well, they would get near the end zone, unfortunately, Chicago couldn't get his team in it on the first drive. So they would go up 3-0 after their first possession, and on the next one, after a great run here, they would get in the end zone finally. But soon before halftime, they found themselves down by one to the mean green, so Chicago Robinson took matters into his own hands, and he would get them into the end zone not once, but twice before the end of the first half over North Texas. Headed into the second half, their lead would continue to expand, and Chicago Robinson's great play would would continue as well in this game. As by the fourth quarter, this was a huge blowout, up 65 to 35, and this lead would be extended with another touchdown run here from the Tigers. And this would end in an utter blowout, 79 to 35 victory for the Tigers, with Chicago Robinson having a career high seven touchdown passes. That was by far Chicago Robinson's best performance of a sophomore season so far, and hopefully he could continue that into his team's last game of the season against Rice, where they were currently sitting in 6th place with a 6-5 and five record and a 4-3 and three conference record. While his team definitely wasn't going to make the conference championship, Chicago Robinson still wanted to end the season strong, but that wasn't going to happen if he kept putting the football on the ground like that in their very first possession. And so far, it had been a very rough outing for the offense today. It was nearing the end of the first half, and they had yet to put a touchdown on the board or even get many first downs. Thankfully though, their defense had been on point all day so far and hadn't given up a single point to Rice. That would give the offense one last chance to try to score a touchdown here before halftime, but unfortunately that wouldn't be the case and hopefully they could get something going here in the second half. It looked like that might be the case as on first and ten, Robinson would drop back to throw and he would take a deep shot to the end zone. And that would be the first touchdown of the day for the Tigers as they'd go up by seven and then Robinson would follow that up with another touchdown pass in the third quarter. And why not make it three as at the start of the fourth quarter on play action, Robinson would go to the left side and that would be another touchdown. Down. Up by 14 with under two minutes to go, the Tigers would pound in one more into the end zone here, and they would close out the season with a big time win, 31 to 17 over the Rice Owls, with Chicago Robinson throwing for three touchdowns and finally zero in the interception column. Not only that, but the following week, Chicago Robinson would get all A's on his finals, and he would end his sophomore season throwing for 3,519 yards, 37 touchdowns, and 11 interceptions and his team would finish 7-5 with a 5-3 conference record, which would be enough to get them to the Scooters Coffee Frisco Bowl for the second year in a row, where Chicago Robinson would look to close out his sophomore season with a win in his first bowl game starting against the Yukon Huskies. Chicago just wanted to get his team down the field on this very first possession, and he was doing a good job of that so far, as his offense was opting for short passes that were turning into big gains. 3-5 from the 13, though, he would dump it off to his tight end who wouldn't be able to pick up the first down. So Memphis would settle for a field goal on their first possession, but would pick up this third and 15 and more. That would be their first touchdown of the day, but UConn would respond right back with a touchdown of their own, and this short pass play would turn into something a lot more down to the 25, and would be capped off with a run on second and goal here that would find the end zone. Chicago Robinson and his team wanted to extend their lead, but with a third and 18, that might not happen, but a fantastic run here by their running back would break a few tackles and would take this all the way to the house for a touchdown. But despite being up by 14, UConn would come back and tie it up at 24 apiece. It was looking like Chicago could get his offense down the field though as he would connect with his tight end inside the 5 yard line. And two plays later, they would pound it in on the ground for the touchdown. Up by 10, all they needed was one more touchdown this drive to put away the game against UConn. And they would do just that as Chicago Robinson would take a knee and his team would walk away with a 44-38 victory to cap off his sophomore season in this bowl game. Robinson would end the year with a 244-yard and two-touchdown performance, and his team
team would officially win the Frisco Bowl game after losing last year. It was time for the offseason now where once again Chicago Robinson declined to enter the transfer portal, but this completely shocked me as all of a sudden Chicago Robinson was now fighting for the quarterback two position in the depth chart. This was not what he was expecting at all headed into the season, and obviously he would win the position no problem, but being an 87 overall and 30,000 coach stress points ahead of the next quarterback, I don't know how he was the second string quarterback headed into his junior season.